very much, uh, Dr. Shulkin. Uh, welcome to the committee. Uh, welcome back to the committee. Uh, can congratulate you and your wife on your uh, nomination and, and look forward to hearing your testimony today. Uh, and let me start by saying um, uh, we had a fine conversation in our office. Uh, I'm looking for assurance that the VA is going to be different than it has been uh, in a more this may sound provincial uh, about uh, Congress, but a couple of things that have troubled me about the VA. Uh, one is that the outreach to members of Congress, responsiveness, uh, our ability to get uh, VA attention on casework and individual veteran problems, in my view, has been miserable. And uh, I, you assured me that things were going to change, and I assume if I asked you that question, you'd be politically adept enough to say yes again today. But the reality is, uh, in my view, the VA is failing not just Congress, but veterans that we are elected to serve and try very hard to care for. Another example of the VA's uh, lack of concern for uh, Congress is it seems to me in way too many instances, if perhaps all, in legislation that we pass, the VA then narrows the scope of that legislation thwarting congressional uh, intent. I just sat here uh, listening to you testify and was thinking about uh, three instances just in the Choice Act. Remember the early days of 40 miles in which it was as the crow flies. That is a way to deny veterans benefits that Congress intended for them to have. Ultimately corrected, that's a good thing, but interesting to me, that's where the VA started. Um, the full-time physician, we, in, in, what is the definition of a facility, and, and particularly as a CBOC, we tried to redefine what a CBOC is based upon a full-time physician. The VA then narrows it, not 40 hours as most of us would expect a full-time physician to be, but something less than that. Again, thwarting the efforts of Congress, the intent of Congress to serve our, our veterans. And the one that you and I talked most about in my office, and I'm hoping that you have some good news, is the uh, opportunity for us to correct this issue of unusual and excessive burden, uh, in which uh, we indicated that you can go you, you can have choice, but then you narrowed it by, you, the VA, narrowed it by limiting the, the necessary procedures, the procedures that were that then qualified. Again, narrowing the opportunity for veterans to be served by choice. In just three instances, I thought, sitting here listening to your testimony. Any right. chance you can tell me right. good news that you've looked at yep. that? and, and yep. uh, Sen Senator, I can give you good news on that, that um, I believe and I appreciate you and your staff pointing this out to us. Those were meant to be examples. I think the field took them literally that these are the only five conditions. And so we have gone out now nationally and clarified that to give the, the flexibility that you need. But let me make the comment. Um, this is complex business when we're making laws and implementing them. So these examples are going to continue to come up. My commitment to you, if I'm confirmed as secretary, is we have to have these types of conversations and this type of communication because you're hearing from constituents and you have information, and we need to get back to you in a timely fashion. That's why I'm committed to that, because we're going to continue to have these differences in interpretations. But in the end, we both want what's best for veterans, and I believe we'll come up with the right solutions, like in this example where I just gave you good news. That is good news, and I appreciate that, uh, assuming that we then see a result. It, yes. And, and in many instances in which the VA assures us that they've solved a problem, you get out to Kansas and nobody in the visit or nobody in right. the hospital knows the, any, any change. So your work is uh, fully cut out for you, even when you make a decision that's uh, advantageous to, to veterans. Um, the, and you, and you, I, I'm thinking about what you just said. You, we're going to have these kind of discussions. That's true. You're going to implement uh, mm -hmm. laws. But it does seem to me that in too many instances, uh, the, the goal has been to narrow the scope. As com I mean, if the, the VA ought to be looking for ways to expand the opportunities, not narrow them. And, and so I hope your attitude and approach changes from what I saw in the past. Uh, I also ask you, and I don't think this has happened, so I, can't, I don't think you can deliver good news. I ask you to have conversations with the VSOs, American Legion, VFW, Vietnam veterans, uh, and, and folks who are very interested in talking to you. And again, I would encourage you in this setting to, to do so. Uh, if you become confirmed and whether you become confirmed. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think, I think I've told you, but if not, I'm absolutely clear on the, on the record that the VSOs are, have been a absolute valued and treasured resource to me as a voice for veterans. I consider my relationships with them absolutely critical to the success of what I currently do and certainly critical to the success of a secretary. I meet with them on a regular basis. I email with them. I take phone calls. 
Uh, my staff does too, and that commitment is absolutely there. And if we need to do it more than we're doing it, then we will do it more than we're doing it. I, I noticed uh, that, uh, that President Trump, his words on choice were, President Trump says, ensure our veterans get the care they need wherever and whenever they need it. No more long drives, no more waiting, no backlogs, no more excessive red tape, just care and support they earned and their, with their service to our country. And in regard to accountability, something I've yet to raise this morning, fire the corrupt and competent VA executives who let our veterans down, use power of the presidency to remove and, uh, and discipline the federal employees and managers who violated the public trust and failed to carry out the duties on behalf of our veterans. I assume you are, as a nominee, uh, you are supportive of President Trump, Trump's uh, both statements. I would ask you just on a, uh, on a how would you grade yourself? If, if you come to this committee six months from now, uh, what would be the scorecard by which we could determine, I could determine whether you've met the goals uh, of your service as the Secretary of the Department? Well, um, we can talk about what the right time to come back and do that is, but, um, but listen, there's only one goal that's important to me. Ask, ask the veterans what they think of the services that they're getting, uh, what their trust level is of us in terms of being able to deliver that. That's the most important outcome. We can define metrics on how to do that, but this is an organization, I think this is really what you've been saying all along, that has to be veteran-centric. That's the only reason we exist. That's the only reason why you have a secretary, to make sure that they're advocating on behalf of them. So let's ask them and let's see if we're doing a better job. Well, that's fine. And Mr. Chairman, I'll conclude with this. Um, Dr. Shulkin, you have the advantage of having served in the VA uh, for 18, 20 months. Mm -hmm. It's also a disadvantage because I... Uh, I, I put you on a higher th uh, platform as somebody who can't use the excuses, I'm going to go out and ask veterans what they need. You know, you know the problems, uh, and there ought not be a significant learning curve. Yours is not about uh, conducting a town hall meeting and learning from veterans what the problems are. Yours, in my view, you have the ability, the background, to actually solve the problems. And so, from my perspective, the answer to, to this question will not be, uh, we're still conducting a survey, and I don't think that's what you're saying. My point, in a, in a sense, is to compliment you for your experience, but also to know that uh, I think more is expected of you as a result of that experience. Yeah. Uh, Senator, you're not going to hear me asking for a learning curve. Uh, if, if you are moving for, towards confirmation, I hope you do it swiftly, because I am eager not to waste another day. I want to get on with this. I think the veterans deserve it. I think our employees deserve us building a system that meets their needs so they can serve veterans better, and there's not going to be a day wasted. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.